guys, Barry from Copper vs Glass here, and today we'll be taking a look at something a little bit special, uh, and that is a Nexus device. Now you may be asking yourself, first of all, what is a Nexus device? A Nexus device is simply uh, a, an Android phone that runs stock Android, with no skins, no adjustments, no nothing. I've been running my uh, Galaxy Nexus here, which is a Google Samsung device, and it's great, I love it. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Nexus 10 which is a 10 inch quad core tablet with a high resolution display that runs stock Android 4.2 Jelly Bean. Now, is it as good as people say it is? Is it better than the iPad or is it not? Let's have a look and see what it has to offer. So what's so great about the Nexus 10? Well, the Nexus 10, first of all, when you pick it up, it feels really great in the hand. It's got a really nice rubberized finish on the back, which is nice and nice and grippy. Uh, it's got the Nexus and Samsung engraving on here, of course. Then we've got this extra separate panel here, which is made out of a similar material to the Nexus 7, which houses the flash and the camera and the little microphone here. Now, I don't know if it's just this Nexus 10, as I haven't tested any other ones, but this separate material here seems to house an opening for all the different antennas in the Nexus 10. So, for example, when I'm using Wi-Fi, if I hold the tablet like this, I get great Wi-Fi signal. But if I hold the tablet like this, and I cover up this section here with my hand, I basically kill the Wi-Fi signal, it drops to zero. So whether or not it's a signal attenuation problem, but it definitely is an issue, even just by covering it up with your hand, such as this. So a bit of a big problem there, I think. Going around the front of the device, we've got, of course, the gorgeous 10-inch screen here. And we've got flanks either side, we've got really great stereo speakers, which when playing music and things like that, actually sound pretty damn good. At the top here, of course, we've got a front-facing camera and ambient light sensors for things like Face, not FaceTime, <laughs> Skype and things like that. And of course, we've got no buttons because it is stock Android, so it uses on-screen buttons and navigation. Going around the outside of the device, we've got a lock button and some volume buttons on the side. We've also got a micro HDMI for outporting video. And we've got a micro SD and a headphone jack. Now, on the bottom, we have a proprietary charging port, which at the moment you can't get a dock for this. They've just released a dock for the Nexus 7. I don't expect we'll be looking at one of these soon, but it looks like to be a uh, almost like a magnet or a, a contact just charging port at the bottom there. Now, of course, the first thing you notice with the Nexus 10 when you turn it on is that the screen is absolutely gorgeous. Looking at the display here, if we open it up, it probably won't show on video, of course, um, but it is an absolutely amazing resolution display. Just scrolling through and swiping from page to page, it's really, really smooth down to its quad-core processor and loads and loads of RAM. Now, of course, you're getting stock Android on here, so you are going to be getting the best Android experience. But, of course, like I said in my Nexus 7 video, I do still think that Android has a, quite a way to go to be a great tablet experience. There's still some issues with uh, lag, some little bit of strange things here and there that you think should work but don't. Um, and it, I think in just general, the operating system still needs to be optimized a little bit more for the tablet space. Now, of course, the tablet does work in both portrait and landscape, but I kind of get the feeling that Google is aiming you to use this in landscape mode, hence why they designed the back in a landscape orientation other than the iPad, which is in portrait. One of the things you're probably going to want to use your Nexus 10 for is reading material. Now, of course, now with Google Play, there's loads of different options to do something just like that. So first of all, let's go ahead and just have a look at some books. So let's go ahead here and open Alice in Wonderland as it comes free with your Google account. And as you can see straight off the bat here, if I open it up in landscape, it looks absolutely gorgeous just by flicking through the pages here. Now, of course, if I wanted to turn the uh, Nexus over, I just do that and it rotates and I've now got a nice portrait viewer. And again, the graphics and the clarity of the screen is amazing. You can see here with the page turn, it's super, super smooth. So I can flick through this book. Now you notice here, there's a little bit of loading on here. Now whether or not that's the app or whether that's the tablet, but I don't think for a quad core processor, I should be seeing loading on the text pages like that. So maybe down to Android optimization again. So let's go back to the home screen and let's rotate the tablet round again. I notice I've got my library widget here which shows me some of my content that I've got. So let's go ahead and just pop into something like a magazine from Google Play. And again, let's turn the tablet onto its sides just like this. And we can start to flick through the magazine. Now again, you're seeing stuff like this, which I don't think should be happening on a quad-core tablet. Uh, now whether again, that's the magazine just being really high resolution, the app or the tablet or anything, I wouldn't expect to see 
loading such as that on a tablet of this caliber. Uh, now, as I, you probably can't see this on video, but there is a very small amount of time. When I flick through a page and it loads, it does take a second to pop into clarity. It almost has to render the page. And again, I shouldn't expect to see that rendering time on a tablet of this caliber. One of the things you're probably noticing is that there are quite considerable bars at the top and bottom here, and that is of course because this is a 16 by 9 tablet. Now, that is, okay, great, it's, it's good for books and comic books, will go, which we'll go into in a second, but magazines, which are slightly closer to 4 by 3 are going to give you this black, uh, black bars at the top and bottom here. Now, looking at the iPad mini, the iPad mini is probably about this size, so you're looking at an extra 2 inch tablet when you could probably fit that into a standard iPad mini size, so another criticism there, but hey, 16 by 9 is better for things like games and movies, so you have to compromise somewhere. Talking about comics, I've actually downloaded the uh, Comixology app, uh, and I've got some comics in my library here. And what we'll do, we'll just go into the comics here and have a quick look. Now, you probably didn't see that again, but it did take a second to actually render the comic uh, as it popped into view. Um, and again, rendering times shouldn't expect to see. But as you can see here, because the comic is slightly more widescreen, as it were, portrait widescreen, uh, it does fill the screen more. And with this really high resolution screen, it really does look pretty amazing. Uh, and there's no need to jump from cell to cell. You can just simply view the whole page in its entirety. So comics on the Nexus 10 are absolutely top notch. Now, of course, going along with the 16 by 9 theme, you're probably thinking, well, what does movies look like on this thing? Because it's got a really great display. Uh, now, unfortunately, because it's got such a good display, a lot of the content you're going to be viewing on here is either going to look a little bit blurry or pixelated. Um, and that's a classic example here. This is the Transformers Dark of the Moon movie uh, running from Google Play in HD. Um, and, you know, as I just play the movie here, yeah, it looks pretty good, um, but it's not as sharp as I would expect. And of course, because it's, yeah, it's streaming in HD, but it's low bit rate. Um, YouTube is actually a little bit better. Uh, YouTube HD looks really good on this thing. Um, but as you can see, Google Play movies here look okay. And of course, the sound is going to be great as well. Um, but the picture quality is probably not as sharp as you probably expect from a screen of this caliber, but it's definitely possible. Of course, one of the things you're probably going to be using this tablet for, as it's such a powerhouse of a tablet, you're probably going to be using it for something like gaming. Uh, if we just go ahead here and open up something like Nova 3, we get to see that uh, the graphic performance of it is absolutely amazing. Uh, the controls are responsive. Again, you do run into the issue of having a touchscreen experience on a tablet like this and trying to play a first-person shooter. It can be a little bit damaging, um, but uh, other than that, it's fine. I did run across a couple of issues where... If, a few applications crashed on me, um, but whether or not that was the app, the operating system, or the OS in general, I did have a few crashing issues, but other than that, gaming on this tablet is absolutely brilliant. So guys, what do I think about the Nexus 10? Well, the Nexus 10 is an amazing tablet. Um, it's got a great build quality, the screen is awesome, the speakers are awesome, everything about it is kind of awesome. The downside, however, is that I don't believe that Android still has it 100% right in the tablet space, especially on such a large screen. You've got the issues with apps not being optimized for large screens, and you've got things like bugginess and glitches that I just couldn't get over. Um, so I think it's 95% of the way there, but I'm hoping that the next line of either Nexus devices or the next version of Android will be more suited to a 10 inch form factor. Saying that, however, though, if you are looking for a 10 inch tablet, and you don't perhaps want to spend as much as an iPad and you're not in the iOS ecosystem, the Nexus 10 is definitely your only best choice. So this is Barry from Copper vs. Glass taking a look at the Nexus 10 and I'll see you guys later.